Welcome to chapter 13, running containers. This is going to be all about the execution. I will we'll jump on the console itself in a second. Let me just give you a quick, quick, quick rundown of what a container is. So basically nowadays you have three ways to run applications, pieces of software. You have a physical machine, which is a, a bare bones hardware based machine where you can run your solution. You have virtual machines, that require a hypervisor to be, to, be, to be installed, or you have containers. Very short, physical machines means that if you if imagine you want to run a web server, a web server, if you install a full-fledged PC, 64 gigs of RAM, blah, 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 then you run the web server, you are under, it, 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 under using that, that machine very much because the web server does not require a full machine to be run most, most, most of the time, and you are under using the physical machine. This is a very short version, okay? This is just a very, very short version. There's much more to be said, of course. Then you have virtual machines, where you have a hypervisor, okay? And you can have multiple machines running on one single hypervisor. That's much better in terms of resources uh, optimization. But again, you will have a full virtual machine just to be running a simple HTTP server. You can do it and it's fine, or you can run it in a container. Simple terms, a container, it's a tarball file. <coughs> Sorry. It's a tarball file. Cannot type today. I'm tired. <laughs> Long day. Creating content. It's a tarball file. It's basically a zip file of sorts. And within it, you have the bare bones minimal information to run the, the, the application. If it's an HTTP server, it's a bare bones code to run it a, an HTTP server. For example, a, a web server can be a, 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 a tarball as small as 500 megabytes or less. Okay, it's a zip file with the elements just needed for, for this container to be considered a solution, a web server. Kernel things, drivers and everything else, it's running on the host. And the host does not need to be a full-fledged hypervisor. It just needs to install the container environment. For example, Podman. Okay. Podman is one and Docker is another. Okay. These are very common names. So these are pieces of software, Podman, Docker, and other, any other, add any other you like here. They all, they all have, they are all good. They, they are very, they are very simple pieces of software that will run the container. Raspberry Pis can run container very effectively. Raspberry Pis will not run a hypervisor very effectively. You can have multiple containers running on a simple Raspberry Pi. Things like a web server, a DNS server, and stuff like that. You can run mul multiple containers successfully on Raspberry Pi. You cannot run multiple virtual machines on a hypervisor on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I'm going on a little bit on, on the extreme, but you get the idea. So it's called containers are a very, very simple way to run applications. They are very discardable, which means I can delete the container and rebuild it very simple with a very in a very fast and effective way. You'll see that in a lab in a second. You can update containers very fast. You cannot update VMs very fast. Well, you can in some situations stop the Okay, this is just a very simple explanation. Don't be a keyboard warrior and and say bad things here. Very simple explanation. So it's a very simplified way to deploy solutions, update and, and uh, do an upgrade, for example, to our web servers or our fleet of web servers. So here you're going to learn how can we obtain a container, one way, there are multiple ways to obtain a container, get it running and get it running as a systemd service. So yeah, the first thing we should do is just install stuff. Uh, I would suggest just uh, do the following. DNF install. I mean, let's install this one here. And uh, this guy here, we should be good. And we should be good to go. Just let it rip and just wait. And we have installation complete. Uh, if you have packages already installed, cool. If, if, if you don't, just install it and we probably most likely have 100% of the tools that we need to carry on. 
So now let's search for an image that is based on, that can offer us HTTPD, okay? And I really want to find one that it's Red Hat based, okay? So let's try to get this one, Podman Pool. Let's try, I don't care about the version. They work similarly. So let's get this one. And let's see if we can pull this image. Uh, and here we have it. Uh, so we have the UBI version 8. This is coming up nicely. Uh, just to be a little bit more up to date, let's try after this one finishes. Let's try and pull the UBI 9 to see if you are successful. This is a universal base image. This is basically the, the bare bones image, but this one includes the Apache web server, which is the one we want to use our to our testing. Let's try that one. Maybe you can get a little bit more up to date. Let's see if you can get it. So yeah, so I think I'm happy with that. So the registry.com, it's, it's a registry access .com. You can use that, it's free and it requires no login. It's basically open, anonymous, you can pull it. Okay, so we have some images now. So let's do Podman images. We have a few. So this one, it's based on Ubuntu, which is fine, but I really want to use Red something based on Reddit. So next we will start a test image with this one just to poke around and see what you can get. So let's start just a, a, a quick container with this image just to poke around the container. So Podman, run, this will run the container. We will specify um, the minus D. This is the, the daemon option. This is make sure that the, the container is running on the background. You can give it the name like test web. Cool. I will not do anything about ports or uh, local folder mapping. I just want to run it and see what, what gives here. Oh, I already have one. Strange. Podman. PS. Oh, I have one. I have one spawned. I didn't remember that. So Podman RM, and we can, can just get rid of it. Okay, Podman stop first. That's fine, and then remove it. Podman PS. Cool. Now let's try again with this this Red Hat based image. So Podman PS. It's running. It looks good, and it looks to be uh, running on port eighty eighty which is fine. Let's just get a, a, a shell going. So podman <clears throat> exec minus IT, the ID and bin bash. I think we have bin bash here. Do we have bin bash? We do, cool. So this is this is the content itself. So CD, ETC, HTTP, D, conf, hd.conf, okay. Not the directory. Yep, correct. So this is a text. This is a text file. Let's grab for port. Port. Let's clean the screen. And did, did I? Is this the correct one? Let's let's vi into that. I don't really remember what is a parameter to confirm it, but you can just poke around of the config file. VM is not installed. Yeah, it's a basic in container. So server root. I'm tired. It's listen. Of course, not support. Listen, I'm just uh, old and tired. I'm tired. <laughs> Long day. So yeah, port 8080. So we know what port is listening to, even though we already knew that because the Podman PS output actually confirmed that. So cool. So let's uh, forward our port 8080 to, to the to the test server. Okay, and let's map also a local folder, a local for folder folder on the next steps. So it's time to run our test container. So now we have Podman images. We're going to use this one here. And we're going to, we are going to map a local folder to remote folder. I have my local folder already set up. So it's here, home, student, uh, what I call it, web server. And this is going to have a simple index.html file. So basically, <clears throat> Sorry, this, this is going to be our root folder of our container, variable WHTML, okay? So let's do podman, run, done. <laughs> podman run, demonize this guy, minus minus name, web server, forward the port 8080 to 8080, 
the remote server as we just found out. We will map the local folder, so home, student, web server, and web server to remote the remote var www html. Okay. Please fix all the SL looks thingy majiggies. And the image you're going to use, it's going to be that guy there. So let's just review Podman run. Uh, demonize it. It's going to call the web server, forward the port 8080, and map the local folder to the remote folder, var whtml, which is the default within rel. Fix all the SLNUC stuff and use this image there, which is awesome. So let's do Podman um, PS. Looking good. So let's do curl http server a dot lab dot example dot com port eighty eighty um I I missed missed this that uh curl server a dot lab dot example dot com port eighty eighty Okay, something is that going south here. Yeah, it's not server A, it's server B. I am a dumb dumb. Server B is running the container, not server A. <laughs> and there you go. So I'll keep this in just so you guys, if you run into some similar issues, you know what's causing this. So sir, I'm on server B, not on server A. As simple as that. And we have now a running container that is running a local folder, has a remote folder. It has all its SLNUX contacts working fine, okay? And it's running HTTP and it's forwarding port 80 of the local server to port 80 of the container. So we have now a successfully running container. And now that we have a successfully running container, it's time to, to make it sure that it runs as a service so it comes up automatically at server reboot. So people, this is one way to get the container up and running at, the, at, at when the server reboots. So let's do the procedure. So basically, you're going to create some structures for systemd to, to enable this container to be to be dealt with as a, as a service so it can stop, start, enable, and all of that good stuff. So I do this very seldom. So let me just, I need to check at my notes, but basically you will create with the, with the container running. You just do mkdir, mkdir minus p and create a folder on home, whatever the user, I'm using student, use your own. The config folder should already exist. Systemd user. Then I'll navigate there. And we're going to use a procedure that is currently deprecated, but still works. But I will make an updated video about that in the future. But for now, this still this this still works. We'll get the warning. I will get a video update in the future. Like, subscribe, and comment to get notified. So Podman generate systemd minus minus new minus minus files. Uh, new files name, yeah, web server. Cool. So this this shortcut using Podman is get it's it's deprecated, still works. But in the future, I will make an update about the quadlets, what they are, and how how can I use them. But for now, it will work. It will. It, this is going to create a new service file that you can build deal dealt with with this container as a service. So we can use systemd to start, stop, and enable this this container as a service. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. Now we stopped we stopped the, the container. Podman stop web server. Okay, then we just uh, remove the container altogether. Cool. Then we confirm that it's off. It is. We reload the configurations of systemd, systemd minus minus user diamon reload okay if you get something like uh, cannot connect to the bus cannot 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 i don't i don't remember the exact message but cannot connect to the bus error or something like that 
just control D, close all, all, close all SSH sessions, reopen a fresh one as the user that has the service and try to come in again. So if you get something like a debus error or connect debus error in red or something like that, log out of your session and log in back with your user. Uh, con this close off any SU sessions, any sudo sessions, fresh start from the beginning with the user without SU or sudo, and this would work. It can, it can happen if you su sudo many, many, many times, and the system just gets confused. So let's just enable this. So systemctl, minus minus user, enable, minus minus now, container web server. Okay, looking good. Now, if you do a podman ps, you have it there. Okay, and this, this if this works, it should be perfectly okay. Now we need to enable the linger option, so you don't lose the credentials. The credentials. So login ctl enable linger. Cool. And let's list um, that everything's okay. Login ctl and show user. Student, perfect. Linger should be yes. I just saw it. It's there. Okay. And now you can just uh, try again. Curl. HTTP slash column slash slash server b dot lab dot example dot com eighty eighty. There we go. So systemctl. CTL minus minus user status. What was it called? Um, I forget. Container something something. Okay, container. And it's active and running. It's enabled, which means when we restart the server, this container will be automatically up and running and enabled through system D. So that's how you configure a container, make it a web server, forward your ports, forward your folders, and make it run and make it run as a service. Like, subscribe, and comment, especially comment part. I want I really want you guys to share all your knowledge with me and everybody else in the community. But for now, for now, like, subscribe and comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.